All right, geeks out there, this is Larry from geekycool.com coming to you from Dirk's Tavern, which we'll take a picture of with the amazing Chris Wilson, who is a professional DM and teacher and many other hats he likes to wear. So let me show you around Dirk's Tavern real quick. This is a game store downtown Springfield, Missouri on Commercial Street. It's uh, been open 13 weeks, I believe they told me. And uh, it's a really cool little um, game store down here to be able to come and play games and buy games and just have a good time. Uh, a place for geeks to hang out. So, all right. Well, um, and, and Chris and I, we tried this before just a few minutes ago and apparently I had something on wrong. So we're going to try this again. So, Chris, too pretty for the camera, you, you were too pretty for the camera. <laughs> yes, I hate when that happens. Mm. I know, you sexy thing. Uh, <laughs> So tell us a little bit about what got you started with this whole idea of a D&D summer camp because that's what we're here for is talk about your D&D summer camp that you got coming up this week. Yep. This coming up week that you've got some kids coming in that are going to get a lot of D&D time with you. And so just tell us a little about what got that started for you. Well, when Stranger Things came out, kids got really interested in Dungeons and Dragons. And I had a nerd club at school called the Hall of Heroes. It's a comic book club is where it started. Um, but over the years, it's kind of evolved, and we've done Pokemon and comics and all kinds of things. And as Stranger Things piqued everyone's interest, I started doing more D&D. &D. Um, and right now, our club, that's primarily the only thing we do. And the kids really enjoy it, and they need a place to learn how to play, because it's kind of complicated. Right. Um, and then I started doing some birthday parties, or... Uh, parties of any kind, really, where uh, a, a parent hires me to come out and, let's say, a birthday party for their preteen or their teen or even an adult or a young adult. And I come out for two, three, four hours. Um, I come to them, and you need no experience necessary, right? I just sit down. I bring everything they need to play. They provide the place or snacks, and we sit and play. And it's great because it's something super cool. The teens are, are very happy, and it's hard to do a birthday party for teenagers, right? I mean, yes, it they is. struggle with that. Everything yes, it is. It's not cool. Well, this is cool. It's something they want. And that's been very successful for me. And one of the moms that I was doing this for, they had hired me several times, actually, um, said, you know, summer's coming. This was back in like, April. Um, it was before the store opened. So maybe it was a little before that. Anyway, she said, you know, my son doesn't do sports camps and, and any of that. He's not really an outdoor kid. I wish you did a summer camp. And I kind of was like, oh, yeah. Wait a minute. That's actually a really brilliant idea. So I went home, and my wife and I sat down and kind of designed this. Uh, and as far as I know, it's the first ever summer camp for Dungeons & Dragons in the Ozarks now. There could be one that I just didn't know about, but I've never heard of one. I, I haven't heard of any either. It's a really novel, cool idea. That's what I was thinking. So we set it up. Uh, the kids are going to play 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day here at Dirk's Tavern, uh, Monday through Friday. So that's a lot of time. That's six it's six hours. It is. That's, that's a huge amount of time to play. That's really cool. Well, and we'll do some other things. Um, all D&D related, you know. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to give kids this immersive experience so there's me and another dungeon master um he's actually my daughter's age and um our families have been friends since we were in college and he is an excellent dm he comes and dms my personal birthday party um every year and he's going to come in and help me his name is ben and we have minis we have maps we have character sheets we have um, handouts, we have metal pens, we have lots of things for the kids to do and touch to make this very real. I, we have spent, I spent quite a bit of money just getting this all set up. I think I have 32 different maps. Um, I've gone, I've gone out of my way to make this very special for them, not just a typical D and D around the house, right? Very cool. Yeah. Well, I know that you'd said um, when we were talking prior that one of the DMs, the other DM is going to spend a lot of time helping kids get, look at their sheets, be prepped, right. be ready to go. Um, tell us a little bit about what your thought is with that, you know. So with the birthday parties that I do, I, I do that also. I DM, but I also get kids ready. That's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Um, with this... I, I want to be able to get them as much playtime as possible. And we have eight modules planned. 
um, so the kids can level up. We're going to start at level one, but they're going to be able to level up. This It's pretty expansive. Well, I want them to get all the help they need, so having two DMs makes that process a lot better. Um, now, a couple of kids have played before, but several have never really played and have no idea. And I want them to feel like they know what they're doing and they learn it pretty quickly so that they're invested in the game um, with a couple of the other more experienced players. So his job is to kind of, he's going to take care of the music, right? When a scene changes, he's got the music set up. Um, they're having a problem with their character sheet. He's going to deal with that. Um, if it's getting ready, if it's your turn, but I'm up next and I've never played before, but you have, he's going to leave you alone, but he's going to come work with me and, okay, what are you going to do? Well, and then he can kind of help them. He can help them look at their magic cards, right? Um, some of these, the youngest I have is going into fifth grade, and the oldest I have, I think, is going to be a sophomore. And so not everybody reads really well, and with D&D, &D, mm -hmm. your character sheets, there's a lot of reading there. There is. A lot of big words. So his job is to kind of help them make sense of all that reading and condense that so that they're able to get it, right? And, and just now here, okay, you have all these dice, but let's look at your character sheet. You always need the D20, but your two weapons use a D8 and a D6. Mm -hmm. So here's those two. Uh, your magic uses this. Here you go. And so can kind of help them make sure they know what they're doing and they feel confident in it so that they're having fun. Because the whole goal with D&D, regardless what the rules are, um, or even the story as far as that goes, is are, are your players having fun? That right. is the ultimate goal. Right. And, and for me as a storyteller, uh, in the D&D world we always fight about is the story more important or the rules? So I fall very clearly on the story side. I'm a writer, but, uh, but that's where that human connection comes from. That's where the players are talking and interacting and playing and hopefully fighting me, not each other, right? And so um, I want them to, to have that interaction and the knowledge and feel comfortable saying, hey, we could do this, hey, we could do that. Um, and so it's kind of his job to help unite them and keep them united as a group who work with each other. And everyone's part of a collective uh, group against me. I'm their enemy. Right. A lot of times as a DM, you don't want people to see you as the enemy. But in this case, you're using that to unite them as a group. Yeah. Especially since it's younger people um, that uh, may you know, be able to chase rabbits and turn it attack each other or whatever but right. this will bring them together so right so i i really do make myself the enemy in this and that works very well with my play style or my dm style right i'll i'll roll dice and go oh all right smart aleck i'm coming after you and i roll and i laugh or they miss me and i'm like ha ha you all stink and now i'm coming after you and that helps them um feel like a collective group against me and it keeps them as friends and it helps them go wait wait do this to him you know and then make secret plans behind me to try to beat me which is exactly what i want them to do right because story trumps rules and fun trumps story right as long as they're having fun i don't care what's happening i mean within this, of course, right but, right you know no i i totally understand that because i my style is very similar that yeah. way so um it's very social that way. Uh, yes. It's an experience. So when I do these birthday parties, what I've noticed is the last hour, 30 minutes maybe, somewhere around in there, um, we're getting ready to hit our big box, right? I time it this way. Um, and usually I step back from the table and I go take a break. I go have some of the snacks, use the restroom. And I tell them, get ready because your big boss is coming. Or, you know, and I give them a chance to work together to create a plan to beat me. Right, right. And what usually happens is they're all sitting around the table. When that time happens, they're all standing up and they're typically yelling at each other, but not angrily. They're like, oh my gosh, we could do this, we could do that. But they're shouting because they're excited and right. they're happy. And their goal is to ruin me. He's going to do this and we're going to keep that from happening because we're going to do this. And I let them do that because it increases their, their fun. Right, right. You know, it makes them go... <clears throat> I got me, and of course I do try to kill them. I mean, right. I have people doing death saving throws, 
that I don't want him to die. That usually. Well, right. <laughs> you know, that's the secret that most DMs have is we really don't want our players to die. Yeah, we, we will kill them. Yeah. But. I'll take you to zero hit points and put you in death saving throws. But, you know, I, I want you to squeak. <laughs> right, right. And, and so, you no, know, I, I plan for that. There are magic potions and things that I make sure. It might not be on a character sheet, but if you're a ranger, you're going to have good berries. Right, right. Period. I don't care if it's on your character sheet. You're a ranger. You have good berries. <laughs> oh, is it not on there? You do. It's in your pack. You know, and so then they can, you know, maybe heal themselves or heal a friend. Right, right. right? And save them. So. That's cool. Yeah. Now, um, Geeky Cool has a, a group that plays on every other Friday night. We've got a, a group of young people. We, um, you know, sometimes there is a challenge that happens because it's an every other week and everything else. Uh, and also, it depends on what the kids have been doing all day long. Because sometimes they're with it and sometimes they're not because we play a Friday night at 6.30. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's a, it, it's a challenge, but that's the time that seems to work for the group. So, you know, for those kids that are a little more tired or a little more distractible, like what both of us have been, um, how do you help rein them in? Well, okay, so normally I don't do... Um, I do two to four hours and right. I build in some breaks. Like right. When they start getting, I'm a teacher, so I'm, I'm used to seeing that. And before it gets out of control, when I start seeing fidgets and squirrelies, hey, this is a good time to take a restroom break. Let's get a snack. Usually if I get them some snack, that will increase their dopamine production in the brain. That helps offset, like if a kid has ADHD, that snack can often give them a temporary dopamine fix and it can calm them back down. It works really well, right? Um, it works in the classroom as well, as a matter of fact. Right. It might be a good time for you to go get some, you know, good stuff. Anyway. Um, it's funny how that has gone from being unacceptable back when we were kids to being, yeah, that, that needs to happen. Well, you know, uh, parents are in charge of food and, and drinks at school. And right. if they say, I'm sending this for my child to eat or drink, it is not my place to tell them yes or no. It's my place to say, you're the boss. This is your child. Right? I can't tell them what lunch to bring or what snacks to bring. That is, that's their purview. Uh, but if a parent asks, what do you think of that? Well, it works and, you know, that's fine with me. Um, if it helps your child be more successful in D&D or at school or whatever, then that's what we're going to do. And, if you're, and I have had doctors who said, I want, I think your child should start getting a little caffeine. And if the parent says that's what they want, as long as the school approves, of course. But right, right. We can't control. We're not in charge of telling kids what they can and can't eat. Right. Within reason, of course. Right, right. Um, that's good. I probably should have said all of that. <laughs> it's probably best not to say all of that. So it's like, sorry about that. Um. <laughs> Well, but here um, we we have snacks planned. Part of their part of their um, um, summer camp dues are, are snacks. I provide snacks. They get free dice. They get a free dice rolling tray. And we're going to have breaks. They have to get up and they have to move. Right. You know. And so we'll we'll plan those so that. Because a kid can't, nobody can sit for six hours. You have to have breaks. Right. Right. Exactly. You know, and they're going to bring their lunch and stuff like that. But that's good. Got to plan in those breaks. Um, yeah. So, would are you using a um, a? Uh, are you leveling up with uh, points, or are you leveling up just at? Uh, so, okay. So, I mean, I follow the rules. But I have a lot of my own homebrew rules that work for me, right? And I make no apologies. I, I do my I do my own homebrew kind of things. It's five. We're playing five E. Yeah. But I, I adjust rules, um, and so I will. We have that kind of built in. Every so often, yeah. we're going to level up, right? Right. Because that just seems like what they should do. We provide. Um, 
the character sheets. But if I have a, I have a couple of players that want to bring their own, and they know they can, um, I've even sent all the players a link already to D and D Beyond. So if they want to create a free account and they want to create their own character and bring it in, as long as it's a level one, fine because leveling up is easy. Yeah. However, yeah. Um, I have character sheets for them, level one to eight. Uh, with magic cards printed out and everything, so they don't have to do that. They can come in and when it's right. time to level up, oh, here's your sheet, here's your two new spells. Experience points is the word I was looking for that yeah. totally lost in my head there for a moment. So so it's it's experience, but I don't calculate points. I just right. go, oh, seems like it's time so, for you to... So I, I, I'm not an experience points guy either. I've moved away because I'm like, here, here are the... Once you hit this point... Once your group can do this together, then you're going to level up the next level. Because to me, that makes more sense. It does. And, and that, that's actually an alternative rule. So that's not even a homebrew thing. That's actually, that, that's in the rules that you can do that. But I'm with you. Homebrewing stuff makes sense a lot of times. You're like, what's going to work best for your group, for your people? So that, that's cool. There's a couple of things in 4E. There's like two little rules that they had that I'm like, I like that. Uh, for a rogue, particularly, and so I use that because yeah. I liked it. And yeah, just, as you should. I just let them do it, you know. One of my friends at the DM had a, a rule that I've stolen because I, to me, it was like, oh, well, that makes sense. When you roll the crit, when you roll that 20, and you go to do damage, what happens if your sword is two die six and you roll two ones? Well, then doubling the dice row kind of sucks. Where you're like, man, I could have got that with a regular roll. Could have done better than doing that. What his rule is, you take the dice roll, and then you also add in the max what the dice would have. Oh, and that okay. really does. It's like, okay, now that that is a crit then. Because a four-point hit crit is nothing. No. But if you're like, oh, okay, now I get the 12 from what the max on the dice was plus the two, that's 14. That's still a really good hit. So, so my rule is very similar to that. When you roll a crit, or um, uh, a crit, that's what most of us call it, yeah. um, I give them max damage. Oh, that's awesome. That's automatic. You get max damage. I don't give them an extra roll, but I give them max damage. But now one of the things that I will also do is when we're playing, let's say you do something very clever. Like instead of just attacking a monster, you do something where you use a spell and confuddle their brain. Or you right. talk your way out of it. Or you're like, yeah. I want to convince them not to hit me and I'm going to use my charisma. And oh, I crit it. Oh, okay, well, he's smitten with you. Or I don't know. Um, he's scared of you, whatever. And he doesn't bother you. I'll give you a token. And that's a free roll that you get to use anytime you want. Right? Uh, because I like it when players do creative things, right, not right. just hack and slash. I'm with you. So, and and that also, if somebody's rolling really poorly, um, it kind of helps give them a little boon. So right. I will try to find a way to make sure yeah, that yeah. kid, who's all of a sudden not having fun because they keep rolling and missing, I'm going to find a way to make sure that kid hits. Right, right. Um, I, yeah, I have you. extra dice with me, and I'm like, okay, your dice seems... In fact, um, I have coming. The kids don't know. I've never... I, I, it's still being shipped from Amazon. I have a little throne with a dunce cap on it. And if your <laughs> dice act a fool and don't roll for you, we put it in timeout, put a dunce cap on it, I stick love it over it. at the end I of the table, it. and then I give you a different D20. Even one of mine. I'm right. Like, this one rolls really well. Or something. Uh, to increase that kid's fun. Because right, right. Above all things, the should be fun. Uh, I I right? completely agree. And those completely. those silly things, while it seems silly, actually really increases people's fun, especially preteens, yeah. teens, and young adults. They love that. Stuff. Well, and even with adults, I've seen that if you can do something creative and out of the norm and get out of that fight, the rest of your team's like. Dude, that is amazing. And so everybody's having a good time with like, yeah, we really wanted to fight that monster, but no, that was cool. So we're going to, and, and I was reward that also. And you know, I, I give inspiration that way. I'm like, man, I'm going to give you inspiration. If, 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 one, if you make me laugh, I'm going to give you inspiration. If you, if you make it to where I'm having even more fun, you get inspiration. If you do something cool, and then I'm like, well, hurry up and use the inspiration so I can give you another one because... Or you did something to help another player. Right, right. Like you gave your potion away to... 
that, that's there a, you go. That is a, uh, a rule that they've talked about with the new revision of 5e, which we'll talk a little bit about, um, where you can share inspiration. Oh, I, I just do it anyway. And, and I just am like, well, well there you go. And so I started using the Elspeth because I'm like, well, that just makes sense. So if somebody will be like, this person, and like, oh, they don't have inspiration. Well, they can use my inspiration. Bingo. Thank you. And, and yeah. And right. guess what? You got a new one because right. you were right. super nice. Exactly. Yeah. So, so for me, I don't need a revision in the rules to do things like that. No, I'm with you. I just make those. I just decide I'm yeah. going to play that Wh way. Which is... Because that's the way I like it. That's what DM should be doing. And I think I think Wizards of the Coast, who own D&D, &D, have always kind of gone with that. Like, it's your game. You're right, right. Make it yours. You know, now if you're playing in some kind of official tournament, well, that's sure, different. Sure, sure. That. Right. Well, that was the first rule in the Dungeon Master's Guide is Dungeon Master is right, right. and this is a game to have fun. Like, okay, all right, well, there you go. Right, and if, if there's a problem, then you go find a different Dungeon Master. You're right, right, if, if you are if you don't work with your Dungeon Master, and I completely agree. But I don't ever have that problem because my goal is for them to have fun. Right, right. And another one of my rules as a DM is, I wouldn't say never, but try not to say no. Mm -hmm. yeah. DM, can I do this? Yes. Now, how in my head, I have to think of a way to screw you. <laughs> right. Make it not work or make it not work the way you want it. But that's where my cleverness and right. kind of all no, the yeah. spot thinking right. comes in. Yeah. Um, but by saying no, it tends to tamp that down a lot. Yes. I play, in fact, I stopped playing with a group uh, a few years ago when COVID went. And we were doing it electronically. But our DM kept saying, no, can't do that. I'm like... But, but it, why? Well, he didn't like it because it messed with what, what he wanted to do, what his story. Right. And I'm like, I, I, it ended up. You can move your story around those things. You, exactly. I ended up not playing anymore because it wasn't fun for me. He kept right. taking things taking that fun. I had. I, I, he just, he made me change my character of who they are because he didn't like that they were rich. I'm like, I've never played a rich person before. I want to play a spoiled rich person. And I, and I, like a teenager kind of. Right. And he would not allow me to. Yes, but you have no money. But I want to come into a bar and buy everybody drinks. I, I, I'm wanting to do some of that. Right, Nobody right. Allow it. I ended up just, I just stopped playing because it wasn't fun for me. Yeah. Well, there's no reason to play if you're not having fun. Right. Let me be creative and let me try something I've never tried. And right. then, you know, make it fail or put the screw to me or my plans in another way. Right, right. You know, or maybe what I did was really cool and it helped us win something. Yes. Like maybe that's pretty cool. I don't know. I try never to say, I try not to say no. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I. It's it's for me. It, it's if I say no, it's no but. No but, you can do this instead, which is related. Yep. So it, it's sort of a yes, but it's a no on that specific thing. But here's what you could do instead. Right. And sometimes they end up liking that better. They do. Right. Right. But just a hard no. Yeah. I yeah. I, I just I, usually don't do it unless I it, I think it's. Um, Overpowered. Right. 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 If if you're if you become the the star of the game rather than being a cooperative, everybody else are your lackeys because you become overpowered. Then that's where you got to say no. Like, mm, no, you can't. You can't be Superman here. Right. Unless everybody else is Wonder Woman. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But but uh, yeah. No, that's good. Um, so what made you um, decide that you were going to do that here at uh, at, at um, Dirk's Tavern? What, so what brought you of, here? A, a buddy of mine um, that we, we were talking about this quite a bit, and he goes, hey, there's a new game store and commercial. They haven't even opened yet. And I went, and they were on Facebook. And I went, one, I, like, I think it's neat that it's on Commercial Street. Right. It's in this old, old historic building, which which gives it a less of a modern look. It's an old right. feel. Like right, right. Very old school. Um, and I really liked that. And I also thought it's a new gaming store. Um, I, what if they're, like, really amenable to it? 
And so I just reached out to them and they're like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. And they were so cool. And I'm like, well, now some of these kids are going to be fifth grade or middle school or junior high or high school. Are you okay? Absolutely. We would love to have kids. Okay, well, they might be loud sometimes. We don't care. It's like, that's the kind of place I want to be. A place that lets the kids be kids. I mean, within reason. I'm a teacher. We're going to monitor that. We're not going to annoy people. We're not going to be yelling and screaming and causing other players in other places a problem. But at the same time, I want them to be kids. And I want them to go... I belong here. This is a place that accepts me for who I am. Right. Lots of game stores do that. It's just they were new, and I thought, how fun would that be? And it just kind of fit everything that I wanted. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, game stores should be loud at times, right? (laughs) Right. Because people should be having a good time and getting carried away. And if you go into a game store that's like a library, you're probably in the wrong place. (laughs) Right. And I don't know. They just seem very open to what what I was thinking and what I wanted to do and they've just been very accommodating I mean they've they've gone out of their way to make sure that we have a great time Um, and I just appreciate that and so it just seems like the perfect fit they get they get my kids and they get what we're trying to do and I just felt great so that's amazing it's amazing well we are going to uh, do some more coverage of this I'm going to be popping in later this week to uh, attend to check it out since I'm off um, from my you know day job whatever you call it the uh, the thing that pays the bills I'm off this week for from that so we're going to pop in and check it out and see how things are going and maybe interview some of the kids but uh, for for those of you guys who are watching remember this is Chris Wilson he is a professional DM along with the teacher out in Nixa and he um, he will definitely be glad to DM your party so check him out on Facebook we'll put links down below and all that so you can hire him for all the parties you want to do and uh, I know he does adult parties too so you you get children and adults or whatever and he makes sure that it's appropriate for whoever's going to be there i do (laughs) we we can adjust that to meet uh your family needs and culture and you know that's right we're going to make sure that this is uh family friendly right D &D event here at dirk's tavern exactly exactly and of course this is dirk's tavern which we've been talking about which is a really cool game store down here on Commercial Street. There's people over there playing. You can check out part of the wall here that's coming apart, which is kind of that old feel to it. Yep. And a lot of the stores down here on Commercial Street and stuff, there's all sorts of little plaques up here. So come check it out. Uh, check out Dirk's Tavern for a game store. And check out uh, Mr. Chris Wilson is uh, for all your professional DM needs. And plus, he's a really cool guy, so you should really check him out. All right. Thanks, everybody. We will uh, have more follow-up on this soon. Thanks.